Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be looking at trying to build our own fire and EMS station. All right, today we are sitting down with an architectural firm out of Indiana. They are Access. They are the pros that are doing this thing. So they've built 30 over the last decade, uh, different firehouses throughout the area here. Uh, we've been to a couple of their stations. This is one of them. Today we're actually in Wayne Township. We have Chief Rice here with us. He's uh, from Wayne Township and this is one of their houses. You know, when we were thinking about this and we started, you know, kind of brainstorming, we wanted to make sure we get the experts in regards to building firehouses. So who better than the guys that actually done it? So we have a bunch of questions today to try to get us on that uh, route on what it takes to build a fire station and to meet all those kind of regulations and where to go and those kind of things. I have just a couple of questions, so hopefully we can have some conversations and see how it goes. Let's start with introductions, first of all. My name is Ashley Thornberry. I'm an architect with Axis Architecture, and I've been with the firm for six years. Courtney Rice, I'm the Division Chief of Wayne Township Fire Department. Kevin Cooper, I'm one of the founding partners of Axis. We've been in business, uh, we're in our 26th year of business. All right, yeah. all right. So we are very brainstorming about this. We don't know exactly what we want. Uh, we have an idea. We basically want a firehouse that has you know, engine bays that can house both engines and apparatus for fire and EMS. We're looking at having an educational center and we want a training center. So that's kind of an idea of what we're looking for. And, but I don't know where to go from there. Okay. So, you know, we have an area that we're looking at, you know, probably covering a, a city slash rural area. What do I need to look for? Well, first of all, I, I think it, we, we like to start with the program of the building, and so um, we, we think, you know, half, half of a fire station, the design process of a fire station, there are givens. There are NFPA standards, there's building codes, there's local codes, um, there's design trends and design standards with fire stations. I think that drives maybe half of, of the design of a fire station. The other half is the fun part. And uh, we really pride ourselves into listening to the firefighters, uh, the fire department, and even the local government leaders. Okay. So I think the first step to take is to define what your needs are, and that would be us interviewing and sitting down with as many people as you want us to. And that's, that goes from the firefighters that are gonna live in this new station, to the entire department, the leadership of the department, the local government leaders and even stakeholders if there's the public that you want us to talk to. We want to talk to as many people as possible because that other 50% is unique and it comes from, from you. But how long does that take to do that kind of planning and, and conversation aspect of it? It depends. If, if we can get everyone organized and everybody's schedules are aligned, it could be anywhere from you know three to four weeks. Um, if it takes a while to, to organize stakeholders, uh, people from around the town and those kind of, and making public notices and those kinds of things, it could take, you know, a month and a half. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Is there any specific kind of piece of land that I need to look for? Do I look for old buildings to tear down, maybe an old firehouse, or do I go fresh? I don't know. I think, I think the first thing, um, if you haven't done it, is a GPS study of your coverage. And so you want to make sure you hit a sweet spot with, with your uh, run times. Okay. Right? And yeah. so if you can nail down that, that diameter or that circle, then we could start to look at sites. And once we program the building, we know the size of the building, um, we could then test fit several sites for you. So I don't think we want to necessarily just pick one. Okay. Uh, there's, and we'll, we'll analyze and tell you, assess what the pros and cons of each of those. Okay, so you'll help me go through that kind of yes. process. Yes. Okay. And what also helps is knowing what's the purpose of the new station. Is it to replace the existing station that's maybe um, fallen apart and it's reached kind of the point where it needs to be built? Or is the community growing so much you actually need to have a new location based on some of that GPS study? Okay. So when we are involved with helping with either the fire department or town officials, those are the questions we help answer so they can determine what's the best course of action. To your point, do you build on a new site or are you taking an existing station to renovate or tear down and build up? Okay, okay. Is there a major cost difference between the two or, you know, I'm worried about costs. You know, we're, we're a young company, but we're, you know, we're trying to plan for the future. Yeah. So cost is going to be a concern. Yeah, it's funny. You asked the building, the station we're in right now was a tear down of an existing fire station that was a grocery store before. So it was actually retrofitted. 
uh, into a fire station and we back actually tore that down and then built this new station on top. That ended up being a very efficient cost okay. uh, solution. The station itself, the hard costs of the station were, were typical construction costs, but I think the savings on the land, the utilities were already here. There's a lot yeah. of infrastructure we didn't have to put in place. Right. If you go out in you know a rural area or something, you may have to bring utilities and infrastructure to the site and those have effects on right. costs. I mean, even if you go out more rural, we're thinking about road access and, yes. and driveways and plumbing and all yeah. that stuff that goes into, yeah. into, the, into the firehouse. And even so, I mean, we probably built 10 fire stations on, on uh, cornfields okay. sites and the soils are just, you know, they're not, suitable for buildings and so um, you need to bring in engineered soils to support the foundation okay. and the building itself. Okay. Yeah, I worked at a firehouse that was built on what they call the Superfund site okay. where they had to build pylons down and, yeah. and you know it's a yeah. basically a floating building yeah. on top of that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's things that we need yeah. to make sure that's we're, we're yeah. taking care of. So now I want to kind of change it a little bit here and let's talk about more of the the structure of the, the actual facility. You know I want to make sure that my guys are and girls are healthy, make sure that they're you know physically fit and those kind of things. What right. kind of stuff do you have uh, or should I consider thinking about? And Chief Rice, we did a station tour of your one of your stations. Yes. You had a fantastic station and yeah. the, the, this station that we're sitting in today is right. one of those. Yeah. You had a tremendous amount of information in regards to health and safety. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, firefighter health and safety is the key to every fire department across the country. Trucks are easy to replace. It, stations are easy to replace. Firefighters are hard to replace. Um, so us maintaining their health and safety and making their their career as long as possible, getting the most work out of them that we can, and then providing a, an avenue for them to retire and live a healthy retirement as well. That's important to us, and that was, and, and it's important to us that the station supports that. If the guys can't get access to workout facility, if they can't have a place to decompress where they can actually get away from the noise, uh, the constant like you, we were we were trying to do that in, uh, trying to do that tour uh, yesterday, and like literally every time we started to do something, the, a rig was going out on a run. Yeah. And the guys have to have a, a quiet place to get to decompress, especially on, in a busy company like this, right. um, and building that building that, that infrastructure into the firehouse and giving them a place where they can do everything they need to do, right. uh, as well as commune with each other. I mean, having they, they, there, there needs to be a place for them to be alone, but there also is, needs to be a place for firefighters to be together because that's they work best when they're together, when, when they're talking with each other and when they're they're horsing around and everything else. So uh, And that was built well into this firehouse. Okay. So. Do, would, it, would you say I need a specific weight room? Do I need a specific... You know, bunk for each individual. Or do I do group bumping, bunking? To I, I think the trend is move. This firehouse was built with individual bunk rooms, and because this firehouse was built with individual bunk rooms, it turned the trend. And all of our fire stations were converted from uh, from large single bunk rooms with multiple bunks into everybody having an in individual space. Okay. Um, and the fact that in this fire station, for example, if you're not on the ladder truck and you're not on the ambulance and you're only on the engine. You don't. You can turn those those uh, alarms off, so you don't get them. So right. when you go to bed, you're at night. You're only hearing your runs. Okay. You can shut that stuff off. Um, if you're one of those guys that wants to know what everybody in the station's doing, you can turn everything on and listen to it all, and have all the lights coming on all night long. Um, that's that's key, and I think that's that's important to firefighter health. Uh, sleep uh, sleep deprivation is is huge. Right. Uh, it's becoming a trend in firefighter health is like the guys just aren't sleeping well. So any chance to give them a better night's sleep, get them more rested, they're going to do a better job. Yeah. I mean, it, I've worked in EMS for 25 years. You've been around as long as that too, you know, and the trend, we don't work eight, you know, nine to five, eight right. hour shifts. We yeah. work, you know, 12, 24 hour right. shifts uh, on a regular basis. So having a place to relax is very important. Exactly. Yeah. I think also, uh, if I could add, um, the gender neutrality, it's built into the individual dorm room right. itself. Right. Also, exactly. the, those spaces are, uh, they're, they're roomy enough, but they're efficient uh, from a space standpoint. And then having individual restrooms that support those spaces. Those spaces yeah. include lockers, uh, study space, and their beds. Uh, and then all you need is shower and bathroom facility. Okay. So that type of arrangement actually saves square footage. So yep. if, if we're looking to save costs, right. uh, a dorm room style uh, sleeping quarters can, can save 
you know, anywhere in the past it's saved, I think on this station it saved 750 to 1,000 square feet. Wow. Right. So wow. I'm not building individual locker rooms, right. large shower and toilet facilities to support, right. you know, bunk room style. And that kind of opens up the door for us to, to have live-ins, you know, sure. one, that's one of the trends yeah. that's going across the country of making sure your fire stations are staffed because we're not sure yet, well, are we going to be paid? Are we going to be volunteer? Are we going to be supplemented? Are we going to combination? Those are the things we're thinking about. So making sure that we have those facilities and rooms are, are going to be very important. And it's yeah. also shown to help with shift changes so that if you're on a new shift, you're not entering a bunk room to disturb somebody who's already sleeping. The way that some of these dorms are configured, yeah. your locker room is the first thing you enter. And so you can easily use the restroom. You can easily switch out anything without disturbing if somebody's in their room. Okay. And so and then if they need to go file paperwork or need to do other activities, then it can be a smoother transition than just turning the lights on and, wow. and disturbing. Yeah, those are the kind of things that we just don't think about when we're, you know, thinking I'm like, I'm just going to build a barn and put yeah. trucks in it. But yeah. there's a lot that goes into this. So, yeah. you know, reaching out to the experts of access and, you know, the other departments that have built these stations is going to be huge, whether it's for us or any of the viewers that are out there now looking at the build. It, it makes sense to kind of sit down and have these kind of conversations. Okay. One of the things that I noticed uh, over a couple of stations it, compared to the older stations is the NFPA regulations of hot, warm, and cold zones. How do you guys incorporate that into these firehouses? Again, with the programming and sitting down with the fire department, whether it's the chief, a committee, town officials, really understanding what needs to be within the facility. As you mentioned in the beginning of this video, you're looking for education, you're looking for an engine, training, and with living support on top of that. Well, we've come to find that some spaces, like the one we're in right now, it's a kitchen behind us, the day room, and functions really well together, open. And then the, the dorm room's off to it. Um, and just once those pieces start falling apart, the main goal is how can somebody in a station get to the apparatus as quick as possible to make them unsuccessful? Right. And by doing so, the hot zone you just mentioned, the apparatus bay is the red zone, where the contaminants are. And, yeah. and how do you contain that to a specific area and not having that kind of infill into the living quarters. So the use of circulation, whether it be um, vertical circulation, the stairs, whether it be a fire pole with a separate room or even airlocks, that helps keep some of the contaminants out as best as possible from an adjacency standpoint. Right, and right, then, right. And it works in reverse too. So if I'm back from a run, you know, I want to contain those contaminants as well. So access to the fire gear rooms, um, even if, if uh, as an EMS person, um, we're even designing facilities that you're going in a separate entrance. You're not even entering the apparatus bay. You're entering the, the, the hazard control spaces right, right. from the Almost outside. Almost a decon kind yeah, of Yeah, you're going from a dirty to a clean and then into a, right, a clean right. environment. And there's a ton of technology out there. We've done a couple of stations that have, you know, UV lighting that's already preset, you know, to clean their kitchens and, yeah. and the lights are important. So all these kind of things kind of play into that for, you know, safety and security and stuff like that. Yeah. One of the other things, other than physical fitness, mental fitness is very important for people. We want to make sure that you're happy. You want to come up and, right. and, and get to work. How can I make sure that happens by building construction? Well, first of all, you got you to gotta talk to your guys. Your guys, I mean, these guys live here. You know, uh, me as, as, a, as a chief officer, I, I'm not here 24 hours a day anymore. Uh, but I know that all those guys have something that they want. Everybody has, has a thing that's going to make it feel like home. Uh, because it's, this is their second home. Unlike uh, every other job on the planet, uh, this is their home uh, and they want things that they have at home. So like when we took this tour, we have that nice TV room uh, where the guys can go in. And once that door is shut, it's actually, a, it's like home. They can watch TV, they can sit there and talk to each other, uh, you know, watch the, watch the game or whatever. And it's completely disconnected from the fire station with the exception of, uh, of an actual run being dispatched. Right. But you can't hear the, the bays, you can't hear uh, engines starting up, you can't hear anything going on because it's that decompression space. Uh, you know, they, uh, we have great network, great networking run throughout the building, uh, having access to being able to put wireless access points all throughout the firehouse and give them a great, uh, a great internet space. But a lot of people don't realize right. these guys are like, they're every guy in, on the job has his phone with him 24 hours a right, day, right. probably has an iPad or a laptop, uh, might have a smartwatch, all that stuff is connected and you gotta build that networking capability into a fire station. Right. We didn't have that before. It was like 
cords are running across floors and taped to walls and things like that because it it was an old it was an old Kroger. Right. right. It, was, it was built to be a grocery store. Yeah. It was not built to be a, a firehouse originally. So you got to build all that stuff in. And you got to think about the guys being at home. Okay. That's that's the most important part. And right. then just figure out where you want to put it so that like Ashley was talking about, like let's disconnect the bay and the turnout gear and the ambulance and all of the things that, that right. Because there's a certain point in the day where they come in, they do their job. They, you know, they do their workouts. They make sure the trucks are clean. Make sure the supplies are taken care of. Make sure everything is good. And once that's kind of done, their time becomes almost their own, exactly. and they need a place to kind of relax because they're here for 24 yeah. or 48 hours at a time. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, one of the th concerns that I have is, you know, some of these newer buildings they almost outgrow themselves within, you know, five to ten years. What can you guys do to help us make sure that this could be a 150-year-old firehouse? Yeah, some of the things we've done, the, the, we've designed the apparatus space to be, you know, again, part of that test fit of the site is to make sure you leave room for expansion. So um, we'll not only design the structure of the apparatus space to be able to be expanded, uh, we make sure we have enough site to, yeah. to allow for that expansion. That happened okay. here. It happened, we, happened. Yeah, so when this station was built, it was replacing a four bay firehouse. And the, the original purpose thought was to replace it with a four bay firehouse. And instead we, we replaced it with a fifth bay firehouse, not knowing that within the eight years since the station was built, we've added another truck. And another crew, okay. and you know, and had, and it was, it was a requirement. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't. Oh, we want to expand, and it's a need that was filled, and the station was able to handle it. Uh, and every one of our firehouses is going to have that. Is going to be facing that challenge in the future. The in every city is is growing. Every city, you right. know, cities are constantly changing, and, and Indianapolis is a growing uh, city still. And thankfully, we've had we had that ability to add that extra truck here. And, and fill the need that we that we uh, face. Okay. Now, not every state or commonwealth is NFPA regulated, but a lot of us use those as guidelines to you know develop and, and, and move forward. So NFPA, you know, every five to ten years keeps changing their regulations. What do you guys do as a firm to kind of help us anticipate some of those changes? There, there are seminars we we continually educate ourselves, so we can go to events that. Um, allow us to keep up on um, the NFPA standards. Okay. Um, the, the fire departments that are very diligent, they, they keep up on those NFPA standards as well. So it's it's us learning on our own and keeping up, but it's also uh, referencing our client, our right. the fire departments sure. uh, that can update us as well. But he doesn't have to necessarily be the complete expert. No, He's he got an idea, be. yep. but between you and yep. him together, you now become the yeah. expert yeah. Right. on understanding what's what's going to be down yeah. in the future and what's yeah. what's on its way. And it's you know um, you can watch the trend. You can be a hundred, yeah, but you can be a hundred percent in FPA, and it's again part of that programming process. That talk at the very beginning, you know how how regulated, how strict do you want to be with those standards? Right. And some departments are like one hundred percent. Others are, I want to do this, this, and this, yeah. and, and don't worry about that. And right. Then sometimes if we may or may not be in agreement that we'll try to argue for additional standards. Okay. Well, right. so. Is there anything in the, some of the uh, constructions that you guys done that say, no, we don't want it, we shouldn't do that, we don't want to do that? Something that I need to look out for uh, in, in future references. I, it seems like, don't you think, Ashley, the, the biohazard spaces, uh, those are always a, uh, do we need it, do we not need it? And I, I tend to try to argue to go ahead and build in the space for things like that. Even like laundry gear, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, companies will will say we just do we just need residential washer and dryer. And I'm like, well, let's plan for a future extra, uh, gear extraction. You never, you know, it just depends on right. uh, the department. Right. Some departments have services that provide that. Right. Um, others want to build that. You know? Right. So again, it's part of that. Um, part of that other 50% fun part, you know, to, to determine what's unique about that department. Okay. I have to and say, their needs are. just limiting, um, going back and forth between the apparatus bay to get to a place. So having living quarters, your kitchen, day room, some of the quiet rooms that you can decompress on one area and then the apparatus bay with the support on the other so that you are limiting how often you are actually going to the bay. Okay. And then, like we were speaking earlier, it's not once you're in the bay, it's once you're returning from a run. Okay. What does that path look like? And if you have a biohazard room or a decompression, can that be a true 
vestibule entrance so that you're still trying to protect yourself while you're um, coming back okay. and entering in it. Okay. So. I kind of got a picture when you guys are talking here. It's almost like, you know, it's our house, right? And, you know, I don't bring, I don't hang out in my garage all the time unless I'm doing car work. But that, that's, that's a specifically designed place. Right. I don't need to necessarily hang out there anymore. Right. In the old firehouses, that's where we all hung out. Yeah, that's, and that's the change that's happened. And actually, the NFPA actually regulates how long you can be in the bed. Like, there is no more uh, chairs and picnic tables set up behind the behind the engines in the bay right. uh, where everybody sat and drank coffee in the morning we talked about the day now that happens here right in this very spot at this firehouse this yeah. is this is the morning spot but it, you know the one of the things that are going to come back is the fire, well that's where we're open to the public then well you created beautiful patios and other things that the public right. can then come a, right. enjoy and, and have access to the fire guys and ems guys in in that kind of standard so the, one of the next questions I have is, you know, I see a, a firehouse like this. This is a very modern looking firehouses. Out on the East Coast where I come from, we have very traditional looking firehouses. And, you know, we're all about tradition in, in, throughout the fire department. How do you guys incorporate the modern kind of look versus the older kind of look? Well, I think it goes back to that uh, when we talk about programming, right? And, and that other 50% of the design process, the fun part. Make, making sure this is unique for, for um, your fire department and your community. Um, and it has to do with context, like where the site is, what's around the site, what, what kind of influences uh, around the site, existing buildings, infrastructure, uh, topography of the site. Uh, is it wooded? Is it a cornfield? Is it downtown? Is it an urban, uh, dense kind of a site? All those things factor into not only what we listen to from you and what your needs are, but what the site is actually telling us. Right. This particular station is very modern, but if you look at the context, it's um, it's development that occurred in the 60s and the 70s. It's kind of retail strip centers, lots of billboards, lots of lights. And so if I tried to pluck down, you know, a, a Romanesque style uh, traditional fire station here, it would probably look even more out of place right, than foreign. Right, right. And so the modern aesthetic here was driven by um, the context itself. Now, the fire department also wanted it to be modern. They right, requested yes. that. Yeah, right. uh, but we have a lot of clients that, you know, one of the first things they say are, here's four pictures of Boston fire stations right. Right, <laughs> that are 150 years old, right. and we want that. Yeah. Right, right. And so we have, we have to, to deal and react to that as well. OK. Um, okay. And we're, we're not necessarily against that as a design. I think um, it's hard to convince some people sometimes that we can't build like that right. anymore. Right. And, we don't, right. and, and if we do want to build like that, I have to go get those craftsmen. And I have to go find that stone. And that costs uh, a, a certain amount of money to, to, do, to do that. Right. It's not that we can't do that. It's right. just it could have a cost. But even that. with those you know, traditional looking firehouses, yeah. you still have a lot of the amenities put into those. Oh, yeah. So, you know, the modern day weight rooms that this one has, you know, and everything that you need to stay fit, the, the TV rooms that we talked about and all those kind of things can fit in a, you know, outward looking older oh, yeah. fire station, oh, correct? Yeah, yeah we re part of our process is we research. Uh, we do look at old traditional fire stations and we learn from, you know, what drove some of those designs, what drives the, the architecture, the style of the architecture, and uh, we can learn from that, even if it's a modern or a traditional looking fire station, and we can evoke some of those forms and some of those ideas in okay. a new fire station. And right. like you said, once you walk in the door, it can be completely modernized. Right, well. right. So. so would you recommend or even do you guys do upgrades? Like, you know, maybe back home, some of my older firehouses are like, look, we really like the amenities of that weight room or this and that, you know, but we have our footprint. Can you help? Uh, us upgrade. Do you yeah. guys as a firm do that? Yeah, we've, we've renovated fire stations and we've, we've added on to fire stations as well. Okay. So, yeah, again, it goes back to that programming process and what your needs are. But um, with, with our technology now, our, our model programs that we utilize, we can rebuild your existing station, existing conditions, and again, test fit and change things rapidly. We. We'll even have meetings with you along the way where we're walking you through the space. Okay. And if you say move that door, we can do that in the meeting, move the door, 
or move it around the corner okay. or hey can you add wood to this wall we can do that in a meeting live design is what we call it okay and, almost and, like and vr virtual meeting, reality kind and of in thing. our meeting make a change and see if it's something you like or not so, wow wow yeah. so not only technology is being built in the building right. technology is how we communicate with yeah. each other you are here in the midwest i live on the east coast yeah. you know is that an issue for access that maybe helped me build my firehouse back in the East Coast. Not really. I mean, again, I think we learned with COVID that uh, <laughs> there's a lot. I think even after we come out of COVID, probably half of our meetings are still virtual. Okay. And so we, we can work together from long distances. Again, right. we can walk you through. I think the flyovers and the walkthrough models, the, the drafting technologies we have would would be uh, it's just going to allow us to to work about anywhere in the world so, okay yeah. okay and it's our job to help explain the clients the fire department yourselves what the space actually is sometimes people can't read plans sometimes people only read in 3d so this combination of um, looking at a plan and then the walkthrough happens what it's referring to you can actually start really seeing what your space will look like and even in construction you can start feeling it too and then start Applying materials in the furniture to see how it so it's not a shell space it's okay here's a recliner and, and how you know if right. I'm going to sit down here what are my views going to be and it makes it helps the design process along because we're getting your input and using this technology to help you feel as if it is already a completed space when it might be in early schematic design or still in the construction documents it, it's funny that you say that uh, you know I've been married a long time at 28 years I love my wife to death but she is a visual learner like even in going on a map she's actually got to put the map on the floor stand on the map and say okay I'm heading that direction so having a technology like that you know if, if any of my investors that are going to help us build this um, they can actually see what's going on I can concept, I'm good at concepts, yeah. but some people actually need to see it physically almost be in that in that area. Right. So, uh, you know, access being the experts that you guys are, you know, and having that technology already, if you're not uh, behind the eight ball, you're actually ahead of the eight ball here, uh, it is very, very important. As we're closing up here, you know, I just want to throw it out back to you guys and say, you know, I'm a new guy starting this out. You know, we're, there's a company that I'm thinking about, we've been talking about for many years, and you know now it's kind of coming to fruition for us what piece of advice could you give us from your side of the table ask the chief sure first from the okay fire uh, i would say i would say <laughs> like from the fire department standpoint you got to kind of know what you're looking for going in like things you need um, but you need to bring the guys in uh, they, they've got to be a part of the process um, because they're they're going to know what what's going to work you know you might they might say uh, we want a TV room, and you might think, "Oh, uh, uh, we'll put a TV room right here," and they'll they'll be like, "That's never going to work here. We're just not going to use it." Right. Um, in order to get the most use out of the space, the guys have to they got to have the input. They, okay. They've got to you've got to let them have the chance to say what they want and what's going to work for them. Right. I think what that does too is it gives them a little bit of ownership about the space. Exactly. Too. So yeah. they're not just coming to work and destroying what I've created. It's actually their house. Exactly. So, yeah. what else could I do? Again, I go back to just talking to as many people as you will allow us to talk to, including the, the firefighters, the department, and the department leadership, but also the local uh, leaders, government leaders, and the people. I mean, it is, right. you mentioned com there is community spaces in this, and so we want their, their input and what they think a fire station should be for their community as well. But the other thing is think about how you're going to deliver the product construction, how you're going to deliver it. There's so many different ways to deliver a fire station. You, you know, traditionally you can, we can design it, we can put it out to bid, we get a low bidder and we can build it. This particular station, we had a construction manager on board early as an advisor, okay. so they call that CMA. Um, that's another way of, of designing a station. What's great about that is your constructor and your architect and your client are working together from the very early stages of design. Right. right, and we're budgeting the project all along the way. So when we do go public, and we do publicly bid, even with the CMA process, we we are pretty confident it's going to come in at or under budget. Okay. Okay. So it, what I hear also you saying is get you guys involved early, yeah. get the, get access right on board right yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. You can help me go through those processes, talking yeah. to the different people. Yeah. I don't have to be the expert completely yeah. on that. I may not think about you know getting a hold of my government agencies. I, that's something that I wouldn't even thought about. I'm like, oh, I'm building a firehouse. Like, what do they need them for? Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, that those kind of pieces of advice is, is 
invaluable. How about you? Anything so else? The last piece, well, after you're in the actual design, being mindful of the materials you're using. You want the facility, the station to last 50, even 100 years, not just from the exterior, but the interior. If the firefighters are going to be taking care of it, what's easy for them to maintain it? You want something that if a mess were to occur, it's easy to clean up, or that if you're moving around and you have a countertop, if something chips, will it actually chip the material or will it sustain it? So to go with um, the routines of the firehouse, you know, making sure the materials are durable and that they're easy to maintain, but still look nice to feel homey. Yeah, you know, like. yeah. I've been at some firehouses that, you know, were renovated and they went low ball and, you know, and then all of a sudden the counter starting to pull away from the wall mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So yeah. those are, materials are, are very, very important. So I appreciate that input. I, I think the chief would tell you as, as good as he can manage, they, the firefighters can still you know, they'll destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been through a lot of recliners yeah. over the years. Yes. So, I mean, yes. door, yeah. door hardware, cabinetry hardware, yeah. the yeah. closers, the hinges, the the makeup of the of the, the cabinetry the doors and the appliances. Yeah. yeah, it's those fine details that will exactly. make the difference to be either yeah. a ten year station yeah. or hundred years. Station. And we yeah. talked about yeah. industrial grade versus residential grade. You know. Uh, an industrial uh, an industrial grade dishwasher with a 13 person you know yeah you don't think about 13 people eating right two meals every day so you're literally running a dishwasher twice a day yeah. versus every three days at your house right you know right. so that's uh you got to think about things like that right well once again i thank you guys for inviting me out and listening and sitting down with me uh this is heroes next door we're in the process of looking potentially uh, for a firehouse and, and doing this. So, you know, we wanted to give our viewers a, a, a good idea what this is. There are some people across the country, across the nation that may be looking at firehouses or doing renovations. I recommend you guys getting a hold of Access. You know, they're here in the Midwest, but they reach out to everybody. Kind of an interesting side piece when you talk about the architecture and all the stuff that comes in here. As the guy who takes the fire trucks from this building and the firefighters out and is commuting, this community is uh, pretty impoverished and this is a beautiful building. Uh, so, like, I was actually uneasy about putting a building that looks like this in this neighborhood. It's the nicest place out there. Right. Uh, but what that's actually two parts accomplished. Uh, everybody knows this building in this neighborhood. And uh, so we have, we do have some traffic through here, but the people we deal with are people that live here. We have a huge homeless population. Uh, in word traffic, it's very easy for people to describe what this building is um, in a sea of buildings out here. And uh, we get... we. We get a tremendous amount of people to just come up to our building and meet things. Uh, we get a lot of very acute emergencies that show up, but we get a lot of the folks in the community that have nothing, uh, they come up and need that access, hey, how do I get to shelter, um, and those types of things. So, you know, that initial, I don't know, like, uneasiness about having a beautiful building in a neighborhood of very working class people and people that uh, don't have a lot of access to basic needs, uh, this building is a focus point. And it's actually turned into something very positive. Um, you know, I've uh, in working with this neighborhood. One of my goals in my career is to have some of these kids that I see out here who have very little opportunities is to see the example that my folks provided them when we're out here working on the street. And my goal is that maybe one of those kids say that they changed the path of their life, right. the direction was on. Right. So when we get the opportunity to have the kids come in the fire station, see the things, see the people that they're friendly and nice, and they're just people like everybody else, uh, the building ties in really well. Um, with all of that stuff. So a very, uh, very interesting things, a lot of unintended, yeah. unintended consequences. Yeah. Um, it almost becomes an attraction for the younger generation. It, it is, and it's something, you know, that people can look up to, right? right. Uh, you know, look at those people that come out here and help us. Look at that place where they stay at. Right. You know, that's something I want to do, right? Right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things here that I will never be able to fix in our community. Uh, to me, a win in my career is taking our facility, taking our people, and the work that we do out to uh, the kids in the neighborhood, and maybe having them have a positive impact on the life and, and not what they'd expect. So that's awesome. Yeah, it works really cool. So yeah, appreciate right. it. Once again, I thank you for inviting us out. Thank you. This thank is you. Heroes thank Next you. Door. Do us a favor: hit that subscribe, hit that notification, so we can keep bringing you more.